Merci beaucoup, merci beaucoup. Merci à toutes et à tous. Et mes excuses pour Thank you very much. I would like to thank everybody. Sorry for being a bit late. I look forward to this exchange that I hope will be fruitful. Will be the fructos. Unimata has been a collaborating for years with the Anadine Foundation for intercultural dialogue. And also in March 2019, we signed a convention for cooperation uh, in order to promote dialogue. This convention promotes uh, research on intercultural issues. And also, Anna Lind has created a research center for intercultural dialogue. that focuses on various priorities, education, uh, youth, the uh, cities, uh, and then uh, some other priorities uh, that will all lead us to a good dialogue between peoples. Uh, this is uh, something that uh, Unimed has always uh, uh, pursued. We believe that the dialogue among us uh, is the best way to uh, get closer and build solid relationships in the Madeira Mediterranean region. Since the creation of UNIMED 30 years ago, we've been working to establish this dialogue. That is why I am delighted today, together with my colleague, Laurence, to speak with you and to exchange views with you and to see how we can collaborate on this subject. And now I think that I will start giving the floor to somebody else. I will start with Uh, uh, Madame, Madame, Madame Saglam, can you hear me? Actually, Professor Benesisa. Yes, yes, we can hear you. I think we forgot to send you the most recent version of the program. First, we will listen to another speaker. Uh, so we'll instead give the floor to Madame Eleonora Insalaco from the Annaline Foundation. Madame Eleonora, you have the floor. Thank you very much. intercultural dialogue in the Euromed region and cooperation 25 years after the, the Barcelona process and in a context uh, characterized by uh, the pandemic, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, we have also a new agenda for the Mediterranean uh, issues by the European Commission and the High Representative for the foreign and security policy of the uh, EU. So I believe that the context is quite important uh, and uh, we, I would, we would like to contribute to, to the debate, uh, bringing uh, on the table uh, uh, the results of our research work on the one hand and the results of a uh, broad consultation that we have carried out also with our civil society uh, network. Uh, indeed, uh, uh, now I will be sharing also some, uh, some slides with you. We, uh, last May and June, uh, we organized the virtual marathon for dialogue. This, is, uh, uh, this was an attempt to, to mobilize and engage in dialogue work uh, a majority, a vast number of members of our civil society network across the region to showcase all the good work that is happening and to reinforce uh, the sense of community in north, south, east and west of the Mediterranean at a time uh, of social distancing and um, challenges that are posed by, by the pandemic. With the pandemic, uh, of course, we have all faced the limitations in social interaction, and this has 
greatly uh, impacted on intercultural dialogue. We have seen also the increase of phenomena of uh, uh, intolerance and uh, stigmatization of certain groups in, in society. Uh, our civil society network has reported increasing uh, challenges uh, in planning their work uh, uh, in a period of great uncertainty uh, due also to, to the pandemic and the uh, scarcity of uh, funding uh, opportunities. We have seen as well like uh, the level of poverty and inequalities uh, raising the pandemic, but we have seen as well uh, um, solidarity initiatives uh, that have helped uh, people and on which we believe we can capitalize. We have seen uh, the shift from the face-to-face -face, uh, uh, interaction into the, the virtual and digital uh, interaction. Uh, do you, can you hear also there is a uh, background noise? Okay, sorry, sorry, it's not only me. Uh, so we, we are acting and, uh, and rethinking intercultural dialogue within this um, this regional context. Uh, as I said, I would like to bring uh, some of the recommendations that they came out from this broad civil society um, consultation and mobilization, our uh, civil society network that counts uh, at the moment over 4,000 members, and the latest results from the Intercultural Trends Survey uh, that was conducted in 2020, so in the midst of the, of the pandemic. Um, our research work started over uh, years ago, my, I think 13 years ago to be precise, and we have established an in the Euromed in order to measure the evolution of these trends over, over time. So the indicator uh, measures the level of mutual interest, uh, the level of cross-cultural interactions, which barriers are recognized for, for this interaction, uh, what are main values and the mutual perceptions among the people of the region, what the people consider to be the most efficient dialogue measures, and eventually also what is the people's perception towards Euromed cooperation. So these are the basics of our uh, intercultural uh, indicator around which we gather um, empirical quantitative data and uh, qualitative analysis by experts from all around the region. And uh, here we have uh, um, the opportunity today to uh, listen to two of our uh, great main authors for, for our latest uh, research uh, data, so Professor Calleria and uh, Professor uh, Saglam. Um, just to enter now into some of this uh, data, I just wanted to let you know that the data that I will be presenting um, covers the opinion of around 13,000 people. I, I, representative sample of Euromed populations that includes around 13,000 people from eight European countries and five Southern and Eastern Mediterranean countries and the opinion of people uh, above uh, 15 years uh, of age. Uh, so one of the first recommendations that come from our civil society, um, let's say uh, also consultation is to invest and support young people, young people as actors and drivers for, for dialogue. Also, our research uh, is underlining the centrality of uh, young people in uh, tackling and preventing hate speech, cultural polarization and divides within society. Indeed, we can see that 93% of Europeans and 92% of Southern and Eastern people, uh, people from the southern and eastern Mediterranean region consider that investment in educational programs that uh, can support young people to lead the change and to lead action are crucial to prevent these conflicts within society. Also, a large majority of over 90% of people north and south, uh, east and west of the Mediterranean consider that the participation of young people in public life is key to prevent some uh, these uh, cultural divides and polarization within society. Uh, another key uh, recommendation is uh, to try to explore uh, the digital uh, uh, opportunities and what are the threats to social interaction and what are the spaces uh, that uh, we can facilitate and create for these uh, cross-cultural interactions. Um, again, our research tells us that around 50% of people uh, in Europe and the southern and eastern Mediterranean 
they had in the last year the opportunity to interact with someone from the other shore of the Mediterranean. This interaction, um, the barriers that exist to the interaction are mainly language barriers, north and south of the Mediterranean. And then we see that the southern and eastern Mediterranean populations, they refer uh, usually to barriers re related to visas, economic, uh, the economic situation. While the Europeans, they relate much more to social and the cultural barriers, also barriers related to the history, to the, the background, to uh, also religion as a barrier to the encounter with, with the other. Where do people meet and how do they meet? Europeans relate that their main uh, source of interaction is work and the business, but then also the importance of the public space. Uh, if we put together the data of interaction about interacting because people, they live in the same neighborhood or they met in the public space, this is the main uh, area, let's say, the main space for social interaction among, uh, uh, for Europeans. While people on the southern and eastern Mediterranean, during this uh, uh, wave of our public opinion polling, but we have registered this as a constant uh, trend in the last 10 years, they mainly use the internet and social media as a source for cross-cultural interaction. Uh, hence the importance of uh, digital technologies, because we see as well that 88% uh, of Europeans and 94% of Southern and Eastern Mediterranean populations believe that the digital technology can facilitate intercultural dialogue and cross-cultural exchange. And uh, what is interesting and maybe open as well to, to, to different kinds of interpretation is that uh, um, I'm at, 75% of Southern and Eastern Mediterranean, so they consider that to online cultural barriers are less of a barrier. So we need to understand if it is the, uh, the nature of the interaction, the possibility of a deeper kind of interaction or more superficial that is uh, le letting, let's say leading uh, people to, uh, to speak about the, um, lo lower level of barriers uh, using a digital uh, technology. Uh, another important area of investment uh, when we speak about the Euro-Mediterranean cooperation and intercultural dialogue is the environment. Today, we can speak not uh, only about climate change as a joint uh, challenge uh, for uh, the two shores of the Mediterranean, but of the climate emergency. This is uh, a, a, an emerging uh, priority, actually maybe the priori priority after the health uh, priority we are all uh, uh, facing for all the populations of the region. And actually our survey says as well that uh, environmental issues and climate change is the area of major interest that people have when they wish to know more about the other shore of the Mediterranean. So this is important also for opinion makers and media makers because uh, people are very much aware of the climate challenge and they, they are aware of the interconnection that exists north and south of, of the Mediterranean around uh, the environmental challenge. Um, our survey also tells us that we have a social basis for this political agenda of promoting uh, uh, cooperation around the Euromed region. We know that in 1995, uh, the Barcelona process started as a, an initiative of governments and the ministers of foreign affairs all around the region. Uh, and with our survey in the last 12 years, we wanted uh, to, to show and to, to, to test if there is uh, such a grounding among uh, uh, people of the region. And uh, we can state with, uh, again, the data and trends that confirm themselves over time, that the people, they consider that the uh, Euromed cooperation can bring uh, benefits and gains uh, to them individually and as a society. These gains are in terms of education, promotion of diversity, also economic growth and employment for young people. And again, uh, another important area is uh, the solution and of environmental challenges. So we can state uh, confidently, uh, at least based on this empirical data that we gathered, that there is a strong basis to pursue uh, stronger ties between the two shores of, of the Mediterranean. Uh, for intercultural dialogue in the Euromed, of course, uh, a priority is also to, to work on gender empowerment and the role of women in society. 
Um, here uh, we have a data that is uh, uh, interesting, but of course uh, sometimes also worrying because we are asking uh, um, people if they think uh, women should play a greater role in society and in which sectors they should play such a greater role. Uh, we see that there is a strong belief that women should be more active in the field of science and technology. We see that uh, in the field as well of education, culture and arts, 96% of Europeans and 93% of Southern and Eastern Mediterranean people would like to see an increased role of, uh, of women. However, when we go at the bottom of our uh, chart, we see that 80% of people on the Southern and Eastern shore of the Mediterranean, they wish for women a greater role in the family and in the house. Therefore, we need them maybe to, to rethink on how to provide, to, to allow women to really be empowered and active because we need for them to release the resources and space to in order to really fulfill what is the expectation in all other fields of, of life. In this regard, it is very important and this is what we are trying to do also at, at the foundation to, to have this a systemic approach and the involvement always of men because we need to, to speak about a, a cultural paradigm shift. I mean, when we speak about uh, gender empowerment not only about uh, skills development uh, for women. The last uh, area uh, that, um, that civil society at large, our partners are calling for all around the, the Euromed is the investment. It, it's working basically through partnerships, working, uh, uh, bringing together uh, the grassroots and the government and trying to create as much as possible linkages because the challenges that we are all facing in our societies, they cannot be, uh, let's say, so, uh, tackled by single groups or sectors in society. Um, therefore, how to promote also better relations within our societies that become more and more, more multicultural. First of all, uh, working with the education institution educational institutions. So this is number one priority that is recognized uh, all around the, the Mediterranean. So the, the school has the place to learn and to live together in diversity. But then the importance as well to work with local authorities and civil society. Here, the importance of local authorities is becoming more and more, uh, um, let's say, important also in the program of the Annalyn Foundation. And we are developing a very important strand to encourage uh, local authorities on the one hand to invest in policies and mechanisms to support initiatives at the local level and of course to facilitate the linkage between our civil society network and the local authorities and the, the importance also of involving uh, universities here it is to be uh, underlined in this uh, let's say dialogue at the local level arts uh, are, and the multicultural events are also important spaces for interaction at the local and international level and then uh, um, the the people are are calling actually for the possibility of expressing cultural diversity in the public space so not to restrict the cultural practices to the private sphere this is like a call or a recognition for people north and south of the mediterranean I just wish to give you these uh, hints for our uh, debate. And of course, I know that uh, our uh, experts will go much more into the analysis of, uh, of this data. So I thank you very much for your uh, attention and um, I'm here for the rest of, of the debate. Thank you. Thank you, Eleonora. Merci beaucoup pour cette présentation. Thank you very much for this presentation. Do you understand French? Uh, your presentation was very rich and uh, you, you tackled issues of mobility, of environment, of culture and digital technology. Clearly, we prefer to meet persons in person because clearly faces show a feeling and but and so it is important to live together in in diversity. Sixty percent of people want to live uh, in a diversified environment, in a diverse environment, because it is uh, an enriching environment. Such environment can change the the perception or the relationship with the other through 
uh, various subjects uh, that is very important so thank you very much for your presentation that was uh, very stimulating and a light and and very illuminating thank you very much sorry i will now go back to a program a program uh, I am uh, and now I will give the floor to Mr. Kalea. Kalea. He teaches international relations in Malta. He focuses on the issue of uh, safety. And also he he is a professor at the University of Bonn. He has written various articles and books and various contributions, especially on international affairs and on media. His recent book focuses on such issues and it is called, it is entitled Security Challenges in the Mediterranean, Mare Nostrum, and it was published in 2013. You have the floor, Mr. Kaleya. Thank you very much. It's a honor and a privilege to be part of this distinguished uh, exchange and of this dialogue, very much putting into practice what we're discussing, which is uh, enhancing intercultural exchanges, ideas, and fostering uh, a new agenda, a fresh agenda that builds upon the successes that have been achieved up to now, but also looks forward to what I immediately highlight from the survey, the intercultural survey report, which is the extremely, and it's already been um, highlighted, but I will emphasize this, is the very rich, the very dynamic, and the very positive extent to which, despite the clear uh, obstacles and another big word that I put in the introduction, the barriers, that continue to separate us in the Mediterranean, it is quite clear that there is an incredible opportunity for us to be able to move forward and to implement an agenda, uh, which I believe already has been identified very eloquently and articulated very clearly by Eleonora. And I applaud the Annalyn Foundation and UNAMED for creating this uh, opportunity where we can reflect, we can debate, we can discuss, but then also very importantly is move forward with a constructive and I underline also a common Mediterranean ad agenda. It is absolutely well known that in the Mediterranean we are very diverse, we are heterogeneous, but not just the cliche that we hear universe, un unity and diversity, it's not something I came up with, it's the motto of the European Union. How is it that if in the European Union they can have this uh, navigational focal point of unity and diversity, we cannot also in our Mediterranean transpose a perspective of unity and diversity. And I think this survey shows clearly how we can navigate and map out an agenda and I'll come some, to some specific examples that I've extrapolated from the survey of how we can start to uh, not only identify, but most importantly, because you know it's 25 years since we had the Barcelona process, which is a generation plus, time is of the essence. So moving ahead, implementing uh, an agenda that enhances intercultural cooperation. My first point, which is very close to my heart, and which is what I am by conviction dedicated my entire life to is education, education and training. So I'm not saying it though, because I am biased in that respect, but because I've had the privilege of, through my own institution here, of young diplomats coming together at the Mediterranean Academy of Diplomatic Studies over 850 alumni, living together, exchanging views, spending one year together, coming from the Maghreb, coming from the Mashrek, coming from the Balkans, coming from Southern Europe, coming from sub saharan Africa, coming from all over the world. They live the Mediterranean moment together and they learn 
about the differences and the disparities and the misperceptions that exist. They are very privileged. They, it's, a, it's a very unique type of setting, but it absolutely creates a conducive context within which by having the opportunity to listen and to observe and to exchange views and to agree to disagree, ultimately, because I have been in the driving seat as the director of this experiment and as meeting so many colleagues in the Euromed setting for the last three decades and all the travels, all the conferences and all the studies that I've been able to see and participate in, ultimately, what emerges is, despite our differences, despite our distinctions, despite our different characteristics, there is more of a commonality in our Mediterranean than a separation, ultimately, when you look at the cultural milieu, the cultural tapestry, the cultural richness of what our uh, historic, religious, socio-cultural, uh, traditional backgrounds have to offer. The distinction though is very much, how do we supersede the barriers that continue to hinder, if not also prohibit us from moving where we've arrived today, because some progress has been registered, but towards a completely different Mediterranean, what I like to call much more of a Mediterranean personality. You could also say more of a prolific Mediterranean identity, being proud of our Mediterraneanness. And here I think it's absolutely essential, this emerged from the survey, that we invest much more time, effort, didactically in the early years of our schooling. When we first arrive in this world for the first 10 years, first 15 years, everybody is starting from the same uh, moment in their life from zero, one, two, three, the early years up to 10, 15. Those are absolutely fundamental if, and I hope everyone has an opportunity to go to school, when you go to school, you need to be exposed to a intercultural curriculum that of course highlights what makes you unique. If you're from Turkey, if you're from Malta, if you're from Italy, this is the wonderful richness, the diversity, but it also underlines our common Mediterraneanness. There's the geographical proximity, there is the cultural lifestyle that we share. There is the cultural background that we've all historically had, different episodes in history, but ultimately we are all from the same part of the world. And geographically, I'm a big believer as a scholar of international relations, never deny your geography. Your geography very much is, should be your home. Geography though is more than just your state. The state is fundamental for sure, nationalism, be proud, but a missing link in general, but in particular, I dedicated a lot of research to this, is our regional perspective. The regional dimension of who we are, what we stand for, and there's only one label you need to attach to it in an intercultural perspective, it's called the Mediterranean the Mediterranean perspective. So first and foremost, a school curriculum that is highlighting, emphasizing our Mediterranean perspective. Could be religious, could be, this is all about knowledge, sharing of knowledge, sharing about, uh, raising awareness about the differences. So there's no camouflaging, no whitewashing, highlight the differences but projected, this is crucial. So here comes the media also from the survey. There's no escaping it. And this is a big advantage for us, even in this type of forum to use the COVID dynamic. The media, there are many modes of media. The media 
we all know everyone has their own interest, projects a certain perspective, a certain perception, a certain narrative. And there's really nothing you can do about it. There's a media out there, a general media, a global media that we cannot, we can try to influence, but let's be realistic. But what is crucial, and this is where schools can come in, is to project an objective narrative, not just allow the space to be occupied when it comes to the cultural paradigm. And in our Mediterranean, you know, this clash of civilizations or paying only lip service to a dialogue of cultures. And no, let's put some more, let's put substance to it and let's ourselves articulate a intercultural perspective of our Mediterranean that is objective, that is constructive, that is based on what? Is based on knowledge. So it's the mobility, we tend to talk about the lack of mobility, the mobility of knowledge, sharing the common platform. And I think the Anna Lind Foundation, UNAMED, this is the very, this is the value added benefit through Young Mediterranean Voices. So, so through all the, um, projects and through all the fora that you've already taken advantage of. What we need to do is precisely this type of activity and more of it is to come and work together more collectively so that our voice, if I can use that, our platform is even more vibrant and resonates even more because we know that we're up against, we're in competition. We're in competition with others that want to communicate a different narrative for whatever reason, and that's, that's up to them. I'm not here to criticize or to tell you what you already know. Another key factor from the survey, which is absolutely fundamental, and again, UNIMED and the Anna Lind Foundation have been championing this, but a lot more needs to be done. It needs to be a cornerstone of this new agenda, the next agenda and in the intercultural uh, formula that we should be proposing is ensuring that civil society, civil society is the driver of this agenda. This emerged overwhelmingly in the survey. I mean, when you see 90 plus percent, wherever you go in the Mediterranean, claiming and agreeing and insisting that civil society drive lead, take, take the agenda by the horns, take the bull by the horns, and are allowed to implement the agenda, I think you couldn't ask for a better outcome in such a survey. I didn't know how many people participated, 13,000 people. That's, wow, that's magic to my ears, because all of us know that we have those individuals in civil society, the bottom-up approach, Governments, of course, have their role to play. The private sector have their role to play. But ultimately, and this was in the Barcelona Declaration. For those of us, we all know the Barcelona Declaration. This was clearly highlighted in the Barcelona Declaration in the socio-cultural and human dimension that the only way a partnership or a cooperative framework will be successful is if you have a policy of inclusion. Inclusion meaning people to people. Governments can contribute. The political will, let me put it like this, the political will is absolutely crucial. Economic resources are absolutely required, but only if civil society, the people are allowed to take the lead not to pay lip service, not to be consulted, but to take the lead in the implementation of, uh, of, of this type of agenda, which ultimately champions and highlights the cultural milieu of our Mediterranean. This I think has been one of the major deficits of our Euro-Mediterranean relationship since I've been living this moment in the last 25 years, I'm older than 25, but as a professional over the last 25 years, is being the uh, inability to allow more space for civil society to implement, to be allowed to, in, what I call ownership, or even you could say co-ownership of the agenda. Any 
initiative, including especially this intercultural type of initiative, will only be successful and sustainable if the people on the ground, the grassroots, are allowed to champion this initiative. So I took that as well from this survey. My final point is, of course, we are very much spoiled for choice and everyone has a different focus and that's correct. Some would focus on conflict, addressing the conflicts first in our Mediterranean. Some would argue we should address climate change first. So the term is prioritize. What I see in this survey is, yes, let's approach the diverse, the diverse challenges. I call them security challenges in a very loose type of definition. But if you want to have a catalyst in addressing the multitude of security challenges, focus on what we have in common. And the commonality is, might not sound like a very, you know, inspirational reference because ten, there's a tendency to not appreciate what we're referring to, but cultural, when we refer to cultural, our cultural uh, specificities, we're talking about who we are as a people. And if you don't have the people subscribing to any initiative, the higher politics, the specific type of political agenda with climate change, of course, they're all important. Migration, terrorism, you name it, every type of challenge you want to highlight, and we have them all in our med the I think what has really been lacking, and this is where I finally, in conclusion, applaud this type of undertaking, is a return to the basics, was part, it was the a third chapter in the declaration, the emergence of Anna Lint in 2004, and ever since has allowed for an amplification of this agenda and the tremendous networks, but now this needs to be at the heart of the new, what I call the new, the new agenda of Euro-Mediterranean relations. Putting on a par, let me throw a provocative statement out there, just as we have programs everywhere of European studies, we should also have, and that includes political support, will, and economic funding from anywhere, including the European Union, we should also have on a par Euro-Mediterranean studies. We have European studies, European study programs everywhere, including my university here, chairs. The equivalent over the next decade should take place, Euro-Mediterranean studies programs in all of our institutions with chairs, with academic programs, influencing school curricula, always through the national authorities. No one is bypassing anyone. This is how you capacity build in a systematic, orchestrated, focused, clear-cut, coherent manner to make a difference. Because by doing that, you will be already imparting, which we distinguished professors and learned individuals already know, with the younger generation. It is only by instilling this perspective in the younger generation the common platform that exists and the pride we should have, and I know we have once we're exposed to, when it comes to our Mediterraneanists, I'm as proud, I'm, I, I'm even prepared to say I'm, I won't say I'm prouder of my Mediterraneanness, more proud than my Europeanness, but I certainly put it on a par. Others should also have this opportunity, regardless of whether I come from the European side of the European Union, the Arab side of the European Union, of the Mediterranean rather, uh, it doesn't make a difference. There's only one Mediterranean and it is our Mediterranean. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you a lot for this uh, reflection and communication. And uh, I am, uh, you are right to uh, insist uh, what we uh, have in common to share in Mediterranean. What we, we share knowledge and we share value. Uh, you are right. Uh, we have to consider uh, diversity and unity. Diversity without unity, unity without diversity 
it is not a good choice. And three, we have to articulate interculturality a mobility a uh, how society civil to do poor implant uh, money value in Mediterranean. Mediterranean is in common and uh, vous avez raison d'insister sur la question. Thank you very much. I agree with you. We should insist on those aspects. Thank you very much for your uh, contribution. Thank you very much. And we now give the floor to the next speaker. Uh, Mr. Netzdet Net Saglam, professor, at, uh, professor of Business Administration at Anadolu University in Turkey. So, Mr. Saglam, you have the floor. There is a connection problem. I cannot hear the speaker. Thank you very much. I cannot hear the speaker. I for, for a connection problem. You have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I'm happy to uh, meet uh, this meeting uh, around the Intercultural Trend Report. I'm happy to meet uh, all colleagues from Italy and other countries. I'm going to present uh, my presentation. Uh, I have uh, a presentation. Uh, I will do on it. My topic is understanding individual attitudes toward multiculturalism. Uh, I will uh, speak, uh, I will start with the, what is multiculturalism. Multiculturalism is one of the concepts of globalization and huge development in communication technology. In the last century, multiculturalism enabled people to leave their originality consciously and without uh, authorization other culture. In this sense, multiculturalism is a cultural that for living together. In fact, uh, multiculturalism is rich in us. We are living with another culture. We are having different ways, for example, kitchen behavior, uh, different uh, music, different things. In fact, different cultures which have historically been forced in the coexistence in a social context for various reasons have generally created different culture and political structure, yet every society is still uh, striving to prevent its own cultural authenticity. Uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, report uh, Elena presented and our colleague from Italy presented about uh, Report. Uh, this report conducted by Amnamin Foundation with the Ipsas, uh, Ipsas, uh, Ipsas Group. I will talk about barrier to cultural uh, encounters. Uh, as Eleonora showed, the main barriers uh, shown uh, language. The second uh, is for ACM countries, visa for the European countries, is social and cultural uh, things. Uh, for the uh, media, for how you uh, believe cross-cultural uh, reporting, the European people uh, believe TV more and uh, SEM countries, but uh, the uh, important thing uh, for SEM countries, the second uh, one is social media. Uh, so in uh, ASEAN countries, people are using and believing social uh, media needs and they trust, but it is uh, a little bit uh, dangerous. Uh, people can use this media 
uh, wrong way, but uh, European people always uh, following the printed media. Printed media is less in ACM countries. Uh, for the interesting news nowadays, because of climate changing, the uh, main interesting thing on both sides is this is uh, natural environment and the impact of climate, climate exchange. The second is cultural life and lifestyle. A perception about the religious and cultural diversity uh, in European and ASEAN countries, uh, respondents are giving the similar uh, response. For example, people from different culture and religious backgrounds should have the same right and opportunities and cultural and religious diversity is important for the prosperity of our society. More or less, uh, both sides uh, accept the same. Uh, for the cultural diversity and uh, tolerance, uh, we, they asked uh, about, uh, do you mind having a person from different cultural background as a uh, work colleague? Uh, European uh, people say 84% uh, doesn't matter, uh, and uh, ACM is 78. But uh, about the children going to the uh, same school with the uh, others, uh, European says uh, 78 is don't mind, but uh, ACM country is uh, 60 only. Cultural diversity uh, and tolerance when you go to south uh, you know don't mind for example Ireland uh, is 92 but uh, if your children go to school with a different cultural background they don't care but if you go to Morocco Romania Czech Republic Jordan Jordan for example only uh, 40 percent if uh, one of your close relative were to marry someone different culture the civilian people doesn't care, but uh, if you go to Algeria, Romania, Jordan, Czech Republic, the respondents is less than uh, European. Living together in multicultural environment, uh, action that can help the people live together to ensure that schools are place where children learn how they live in diversity. Uh, I will uh, speak on the, about the education because to being at university professor. Education is very important both sides. In European side, in uh, ACM countries, people say uh, you can learn uh, multicultural at the school because you are meeting first time the different cultural people at the school. Uh, taking polarization and hate speech uh, measure to prevent and deal with the conflict and radicalization also, it comes to, again, education is the first choice, uh, the second and the other continue. The survey show education is very important. Gain from Euromed cooperation, and uh, for example, as in countries says, education and uh, training very important. 78% uh, of people say this is uh, important. Recognition of uh, other cultures or cultural diversity for the uh, ACM countries higher than European countries. Economic and uh, employment is important because of unemployment and because of poor, poor uh, live. People are uh, migrating from Africa to Europe. Uh, this is another thing. I'm approaching multiculturalism with a framework of learning that says that learning to live together is vital to a fulfilled life and that in our global society, living together in Italy, entire multiculturalism. Uh, I, for identifying generous uh, stage of the learning, we say uh, this is learning to know, learning to do, learning to live together, uh, learning to, to be. Uh, for identifying, for example, there is six uh, major attitudinal step there is uh, hierarchical a little uh, like uh, Maslow human needs inform struck tolerate respect accept embrace and celebrate is important for multiculturalism and accepting other people uh, there are many barriers for uh, multiculturalism 
but I will not uh, talk about uh, more things. For example, disabilities is a very important uh, barrier for the multiculturalism health problem, uh, and also education and training system is a barrier because many people doesn't reach the education uh, for the uh, literacy in many countries, people doesn't read and write. So it is uh, many, there are many problems like uh, uh, marrying very young age, etc. That's why uh, this is a barrier to uh, multiculturalism. Cultural differences is also uh, a, a barrier, while cultural differences may be perceived and barrier by people, uh, any background, they can particularly affect people with uh, favor opportunities. Social barrier also important for multiculturalism, social adjustments difficulties such limited social competence, antisocial, high risk behaviors, uh, often this drug, alcohol, abuse, social marginalization may respect the barrier also for the multiculturalism. And other things nowadays, it is a big problem for uh, Africa countries and uh, other uh, Middle East and uh, Asian countries. For example, nowadays, Afghanistan, you know, Afghanistan situation, uh, with also economic and social and uh, other problem, people always uh, migrating and going to another countries. Uh, barrier linked to discrimination uh, on multiculturalism. Geographical, there is also geographical uh, barriers. Uh, environment and fight against the climate change. Nowadays, uh, environment and climate action are key priorities now and in future. The new growth st strategy and uh, recognize the key role of school training institution and universities to engage with the public parents and wider community on changes need the uh, successful transaction to the climate uh, in future. Uh, also, the participating democratic life uh, is a barrier on multiculturalism. Uh, during the pandemic, we learned many things from uh, COVID has shown access to education is providing more than ever to be essential to ensuring a civic recovery while promoting equal opportunities for all. As a part of uh, this recovery process, we should make program take its inclusive dimension to a new horizon by supporting opportunities for personal, social, economic, educational, and professional development of people in Euromed and beyond with a, a aim of uh, leaving no one behind. Uh, digital transformation uh, uh, during the uh, uh, pandemic time getting uh, important because uh, digitalization uh, is important. Uh, we can reach uh, everything with the digital ecosystem. We should uh, organize digital uh, teaching for the uh, people. Uh, for the future, there are some uh, priorities myself in Euro Mediterranean area. Previous speaker said Mediterranean is our common future. I believe Mediterranean is common future. We are the same road. We should organize and we should do many things for our uh, next generation. Furthermore, developing skills digital skills and competence and skill in forwarding looking fields such as uh, combating climate change, clean energy, artificial intelligence, robotic, big data analysis, etc., is essential for Euromed future sustainable growth and cohesion. Investing in knowledge, skill and competence will benefit individual, institution, organization and society as well by contributing to sustainable growth and ensuring equity, prosperity, and social inclusion in Euromed region. Uh, in the line of Euromed priorities in making sustainable, it is economy, projects should be designed in a uh, eco-friendly manner and should incorporate green practice in all uh, places. 
Organization of participants involved should have an environment-friendly approach when uh, designing their project will be in, uh, in, uh, in coach and then discuss the learn and environmental issues, make them think about what can be done at their level and help them come up with alternative greener way of implementing their activities. Supporting and uh, fascinating the uh, transnational and international cooperation between civil society organization in field of education, training, youth and sport is essential, empowering people with more key competence, reducing early school leaving and recognizing competence accurate to formal, informal and non-formal education. Education and training, youth and sport are key area that support, uh, support uh, citizens in their personal and professional development. Uh, high quality, inclusive education and training ultimately equip uh, young people and participants of all ages with the uh, qualification and skill needed for their meaningful participating in democratic society, intercultural understanding and successful uh, translation in labor market. Uh, in fact, uh, the report showed many things for us. We learned many things uh, from the report and we should organize many things in Mediterranean area. As I uh, mentioned before, we should invest uh, for the training and education uh, system. For my idea, uh, we should organize the Erasmus Plus uh, program in uh, civil society organization in uh, Annalyn Foundation, and we will support uh, young exchange. Uh, it will affect the multiculturalism and cultural exchange. I'm supporting this kind of idea. This is innovative idea. Thank you very much for listening for me. Thank you very much. Thank you a lot. Il faut rapprocher cette étude avec celle de. We should reconcile this study with Eleonora's study because they both consider the issue of perception and also the future, a future perspective. So, how to conceive things in the future. The, the, the speaker has a connection problem. I haven't heard the last sentence. So cultural development, tolerance. Tolerance is a first priority. It is need. And living together is essential. Have you also considered the issue of youth? How do the youth, how do the young people perceive themselves in this digital uh, world, in the world of COVID, in the world of digitalization, in the world that is always changing? I am open to the idea according to which people choose tolerance as a first priority and celebrity as the last priority, which means that we want to live in a different world. We want to get closer to the other and we want other values uh, for the Mediterranean region. I've always said that the Mediterranean uh, region is based on what we think of the Mediterranean region. So your presentation was very stimulating and surely we will work in order to meet the expectations of people because we have to keep listening to people for a better world for our children and our current children. Thank you very much, Mr. Zaglam. It was a pleasure to listen to you. I will now give the floor to Mr. Antonio Chavez Rendon.
He teaches uh, Arab philology at the university at the University of Cardiff. Of Cardiff. There is a close link between philology and peace and war, as Papa said. If we cannot find a word to communicate, we take weapons, we use weapons. So we need to push people to communicate more and to use more peaceful words in a language. You work on issues of migration, international cooperation, and you are an expert of administrative management uh, in NGO and uh, uh, no profitable organizations. So you have collaborated and you contributed to launching the uh, Spanish Cultural Center in Marrakesh. Also, you uh, are the head of strategic planning and programs at the Tres Culturas Foundation. You, you are going to speak about those aspects. So you have the floor. You have the floor, Mr. Rendon. The speaker has a connection problem. I cannot hear you. I cannot hear the speaker because of a connection problem. So you have the floor, Mr. Chavez. Good morning, everybody. First of all, I would like to thank UNIMED and Annaline Foundation for inviting uh, Tres Culturas Foundation to present a reflection on intercultural dialogue and on the creation of intercultural spaces. Uh, I would also like to present Tres Culturas Foundation. Our institution was created In 1997, in Sevilla, in Spain, by Moroccan government and by Andalusia government in Spain, and we are the heads of the Barcelona process that proposed, proposed the creation of a space for exchange between the north and the south of the Mediterranean. And since that year, we've been working on academic programs and with the civil society. So based on that experience, we would like to present our recommendations in order to create spaces that allow for intercultural uh, meetings. Uh, so in other words, we believe that one of the main goals of our society in the region is moving from multiculturality to interculturality meaning that from multiculturalism to interculturalism, meaning that we should create spaces that allow to recognize diversity that exists between the North and the South. And starting from that, from that recognition, we should identify the points in common and real dialogue and collaborate uh, in order to achieve common goals. Also, in our view, based on the, the Annaline Foundation report, education is one of the main elements that can allow to manage 
this kind of society in which we work and to promote change. But in order to work on intercultural education, we need to work with the population, but also with minorities. So we need a holistic vision of the society. Also, let us speak about the mission. Uh, how can we approach culture? We shouldn't simply consider folklore. Instead, we should also work on socioeconomic factors and on uh, social uh, dynamics uh, of each culture. Also, we should work on intercultural uh, dialogue through technology. We shouldn't totally focus on, in, on, on intellectual uh, aspects. We should work inside groups. So we believe that in order to work on culture, we need to feel culture and feel diversity. We need to reflect on cultural diversity. So, that, so with that kind of reflection, we need to take action and generate these spaces for intercultural meeting. So in order to create these kind of spaces for intercultural dialogue, we need five elements. First of all, we, uh, we should establish a common code in order to promote communication. We should also promote <laughs> the knowledge of the culture of the other but also we need to know well our own culture in order to uh, provide explications on the elements of our specific cultures. Fourth, in a view, we should work to erase biases and prejudice we should avoid a biased vision that does not match up with the real values of the culture of the other. And finally, one of the elements that can promote this intercultural dialogue space is being able to empathize to put ourselves in the shoes of the others uh, and uh, get to know his uh, hopes, uh, his uh, cultural values in order to uh, in order to increase solidarity towards the other, in order to favor interaction between majority groups and minorities. In a view, we should favor also the participation of groups in the decision-making process in this kind of dialogue. And also, we need to prioritize spaces that allow to meet the others so the main goal of our work for intercultural dialogues is that of working among, pe among people. Then there is another element that uh, the Trascultores Foundation has focused on, how to tackle intercultural conflicts, clashes. In a view, those clashes should be considered as a positive element. First of all, cultures are different, meaning that there are different perceptions of reality. But 
we need to allow each culture to express its way to look at culture. So we shouldn't simply avoid clashes and conflicts. We need to manage them instead, meaning that we must work together with different groups through dialogue, words, through the recognition of diversity in order to receive the different ideas uh, of the different cultures, uh, the different ways to express the reality in the different cultures. Uh, this means that we want to solve conflicts instead of uh, putting an end to them because uh, clashes exist, but we need to manage them. Uh, clashes are a complex element and there are different elements that explain those clashes. So we need to approach the clash, the conflict, and then we need to manage them well. So at the end of the day, we must have a positive and creative perspective on those conflicts as an opportunity to advance in the intercultural dialogue. So to conclude, In order to work uh, on intercultural dialogue and education, we need clearly to work with uh, majority groups and with minorities, but most importantly, we should focus on the tolerance, on openness, on dialogue. So we need to work in order to change the perception of the other so that it can be perceived as an opportunity to know the other as a window that allows us to look out on this new reality. So to conclude, this uh, list of ideas and suggestions I would like to say that we the members of the soci civil society we should work in order to live together and the future of Europe and the future of the southern countries is very much linked to the it's very much linked to living together so the real wealth is the fact that we can live together but we need to manage this wealth and we need to defend this wealth thank you very much for your attention i am available to answer questions thank you very much Thank you very much for this beautiful uh, uh, presentation on living together. I will uh, list the uh, main points. Your foundation was founded in 1997, and its name is Tres Culturas, thanks to the initiative of three countries, and it is the era of the Barcelona process. It analyzes the exchanges and relationships between the North and the South, with the education institutions, but also with the civil society. It is a space for intercultural dialogue. It said that we should move from multiculturalism to interculturalism. I would like you to explain better that um, aspect also. He said the recognition goes through dialogue and we must collaborate. And also you uh, identified a priority that is education. 
because in order to conceive this new society, we need education, and also education can promote a change in the society. That is why you want to have a dialogue with the majority groups and with the minorities, which is a fantastic option. Also, you said that we should analyze uh, socioeconomic factors uh, and also you think that we should work with groups uh, based on emotional aspects also i think that this is uh, an innovative aspect because we tend to neglect a bit the emotional aspects uh, and there is instead a Cartesian supremacy. A bad reason without emotions is blind, as Kant said. Concepts are intuitions, but they shouldn't be blind. We need concepts, but we also need intuition that is linked to feelings. So these reflection based on feelings, uh, and uh, here I would like to add something, because, as you know, you know Adam Smith. Before being an economist, he was a professor of moral in Glasgow, and uh, he uh, wrote a book on the theory of moral feelings. Uh, it was a thousand pages in which he explained why we feel empathy for the other. For the other. You use the same word. We always want to uh, put ourselves in the shoes of the other. We want to feel what the other feels. At the time, we want to even share the pain of the other. This uh, emotional exchange is fundamental for uh, human societies. There is the element of peace that is at the, at the core of the human existence. So all those elements uh, tend to change perception or culture of the others and of us as there are points in common, there are differences, there can be clashes, conflicts and clashes could be an opportunity if they are well managed, if they are well oriented, if they become productive uh, uh, for a more peaceful society. And you, uh, you are right there, because at times there are clashes, uh, but not for the right reasons. Those are clashes uh, that cause other clashes. At the times we wonder why they happen. Thank you very much, because you open the door to a possibility to rethink our own convictions in order to be able to really live together, which is something dynamic. It is not static. It, it requires a participation and poiesis. Uh, and we need to analyze our efforts uh, in order to be able to live together peacefully, democratically, and in freedom, because culture without freedom is nothing. And a culture without commitment is nothing. As Sartre stated, we we should always be committed for a good cause, uh, and that good cause is lived together. Is living together. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to reflect with you on uh, the contribution of uh, Tres Culturas Foundation. So now the debate is open to everybody. Who 
Who would like to take the floor now? Avez-vous de commentaires à faire? Would you like to make comments on what the others said? If, if I may, if, if I may. Firstly, I would like to thank my uh, colleagues because it's been a very, uh, very impressive uh, exchange of fascinating perspectives which I find uh, very much also helps us to map out a plan of action, if I could put it like that. I mean, so many uh, specific variables, so many practical and pragmatic uh, types of uh, perspectives that quite often are lacking because if we if we concur, if we agree that we want to go from where we are towards a more cooperative framework, we can only do that if we identify the specific stepping stones that we must incorporate and uh, build upon. And I thought both of the, again, I'm sharing in real time, the, both of the presentations by my, um, although I don't, I've, I haven't had the privilege, so this is a unique, opportunity, I haven't had the privilege to meet you personally, but also I think I want to pick up on another element of the survey and at least put it in the discussion of where in addition to what we've been emphasizing about the necessity to supersede barriers is what I heard in the synopsis of the excellent survey of intercultural trends, which was the digital transformation. I think that the digital transformation which I'm the first to admit, I am fascinated by how this moment in our history of the pandemic, we've resorted to an alternative. It was already available, but I was, I'm the first to admit I wasn't, I'm not only savvy, I wasn't even aware of the uh, advantages that this type of communicative framework uh, uh, provides. Again, never at the expense of the Erasmus Plus, face-to-face, -face, coming together, mobility of persons, we all know that. But in addition to, I think this digital transformation should be a, seen as a fascinating opportunity. Again, a positive perspective. I'm not spinning yet because we've put it into practice. We, here we are meeting today. And I think we can reach, ultimately, if we're talking of uh, intercultural paradigm shift in our Mediterranean, the digital transformation is the key. El Muftiq in Maltese, maybe in Arabic. It's the key, it's a sort of passport that will allow us to take leaps and bounds forward that maybe we didn't appreciate, I'll speak for myself, I didn't appreciate enough. Um, you know, I'd like to be able for everybody to fly everywhere and have scholarships and open a hundred universities and programs. And we should encourage that, but, in, but simultaneously, so we keep championing the people for people mobility. It's the mobility of knowledge and the digital transformation with the specificities of both these fascinating uh, presentations, everything you, us and them, bridging the us and them, addressing misperce misperceptions, prejudice, uh, bias, uh, you know, if we really want to foster trust and respect, let's really have a, uh, an energized dialogue as a result of the digital transformation. I think there, there we can do, I'm, I, I actually think there we've discovered something. Um, at least I'm much more aware of it. Uh, and I believe if we seek political support, and the economic resources, you always need that. With the digital transformation component, the intercultural type of uh, formula that you, that's been articulated as a result of extrapolating from the survey and the specialists that we have in this debate, uh, we can see progress, and this is crucial. You need to be able to register progress 
if you're going to be able to sustain what we're um, articulating here, unless we can attract and maintain the support of the younger generation, I'm extremely fearful. So to put forward a very sober analysis, I'm fearful we could again uh, have a missed opportunity, if not only, if not also lose the opportunity of engaging the younger generation in the year 2021. So this decade, the decade ahead, let's do it. Let's do it with the digital transformation through the specificities that were articulated. So it's not only digital, that's the mode, that's the mechanism, but it works. I'm the first to be, uh, to, to admit, I think I was one of the you know, greatest skeptics of the extent to which it would work. It works. And here's another lesson I've learned just to share from the, the younger generation are much more technologically savvy than I ever imagined. And I think I'll ever be. So that's another plus in the initiative when you're reaching out to the audience that you want to engage with all the differences. And thank you, Professor, uh, for highlighting. Yes, we want tension. Passion is who we are in the Mediterranean. We want to be emotional. We want to even, you know, if I you want to use that term loosely, we want to have a clash of perspectives and ideas. And I applaud you for that. So there is no, there is no circumventing it or trying to dilute it. Far from it. Let's bring our passion and all that to the fore. But I think one way of the way to do it, because I don't see another way of doing it, to reach uh, the collective mast at a grassroots level, we need to have that common platform through the different support that it's already very well based here with, of course, more resources. If we can attract on a consistent, continuous basis. So if others want to project a different narrative, let them do it. But the objective, constructive, and also very diverse narrative is also there for those who would like to listen to it and participate and share in it. I think that's very, very impressive. It's my instant reaction to listening to the um, wonderful presentations and thank you again for the opportunity. May I add something? Uh, I have a good sample about the digital platform for the Supporting Amman Foundation. We had a virtual academy project. Uh, we developed five courses. Uh, the partner was from Morocco, from UK, from Ireland, from Belgium, from Turkey, and from Germany. We developed uh, five courses in five different languages, in Turkish, in Arabic, in German, in French, and uh, in uh, Arabic also. The course was uh, uh, for civil society organization. For example, one of the course is organizational and administrative development for civil society organization. And the second is advocacy strategies skill and tools for civil society organization. And third is project management, reporting and sustainable and effective resource management for civil society organization. Fourth is strategic communication for civil society organization. Fifth is leadership. In fact, it was a pilot project. There was uh, our target group is around uh, 100, but we had 200 participants. It was very successful uh, things during the corona. We didn't get the face-to-face, -face, but we developed these courses. These courses was interactive courses. There was a cartoon and speaking and uh, teaching the, uh, as a different ways. And we have experience at the Open Education uh, University. And so uh, we shared uh, this good practice. I would like to share with you if you go to uh, underneath virtualacademy.com uh, or org, you can reach in future for, uh, we can maybe translate Italian and Spanish other language, but it was really, really 
good uh, thing during the COVID time. Thank you very much. Merci pour ces éclaircissements. Thank you very much for saying this. So I would like to thank Professor Steven Kalea regarding the issue of the technological or the digital transformation, because in my view, the great challenge of Mediterranean countries, especially after the pandemic, is the digital transformation, digitalization, but we should state notice that most countries in the south of the Mediterranean region do not have the necessary resources that allow for that allow its population to access digital resources. So we should. So there will be because of that a greater and greater gap, uh, a technological gap, because uh, southern countries do not have enough resources to promote digitalization. So we should consider this a great challenge. Well, yes, absolutely because uh, the digital gap has never been as big as it is now, I mean, between the North and the South. And so we need to work in order to bridge this gap so that Southern countries uh, can be able to participate in the digital transformation at the international level. The digital revolution is not an option. It is an obligation, it is a must. And we need more and more sophisticated techniques and technologies that are very expensive. And I fear, I mean, I agree with you, Mr. Chavez, I fear that the gap will be greater and greater over time if we do not have a Marshall Plan to bridge this gap. So it is a wealthy responsibility to tackle this. They, the wealthy should help southern countries. Uh, same applies to vaccination. Uh, we, I mean, if we vaccinate the north and we do not vaccinate the south, that there will be new cases every day. So we should understand that humankind is one and plural at the same time. We need a change in people's mindset, but if that does not happen, we will never get out of the pandemic. I am very much moved by what you said. We must promote digital transformation, but we need the resources to do that. And our universities during the pandemic time has had many problems because some um, schools and universities do not have the infrastructures. For example, in Tunisia, the system d'alternance. With the, 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 we have a system based on one day of work and one day of rest, and that has been very negative. Actually, we have had terrible losses in terms of knowledge and progress. So if we had a good network and a good digitalization, we would be in a much better place. Thank you for your attention. Um, yes, we still have 12 minutes. Uh, it, it will only take three minutes. 
to, to thank uh, you and our panelists because it was uh, very, very rich. I think it's always interesting to participate in, in the debates and develop new, new reflections. And I'm coming out of, of the debate with the two uh, key words that, uh, that are emerging and that are the importance of empathy and, uh, as you said, also sympathy. Uh, and learning. These, I believe, are two fundamental um, steps uh, and uh, attitudes for making the shift from the intercultural to the uh, from the multicultural to the intercultural reality that also um, uh, Antonio Chavez was underlining as a fundamental uh, as a um, as a development for our for our societies and. Uh, and I believe that also the COVID pandemic as a shared challenge for humanity is helping us help in the tragedy that of course it has caused also for people all around the world and in the Euromed to feel this sense of connection, of interdependence. As you are saying, the vaccination to be administered only among Europeans means nothing and the people are becoming more and more aware of the importance of thinking of other countries uh, and, and the reality in other countries, how much this can affect uh, our, own, our own reality. So we can say that despite the harsh um, reality that COVID-19 posed uh, to all of us, it also helped somehow to create this feeling of belonging to a uh, join to, to one humanity and that uh, we need absolutely uh, solidarity for our survival. So uh, starting from a negative aspect, uh, we can say that we, we can see, of course, uh, with the right uh, intentions, also the decision making level towards a positive uh, shift. And I believe uh, that the same uh, is the, the climate change emergency, that they can really bring people together because we are understanding every day more how much we are connecting and we are living the same uh, the same challenge so for sure for this uh, shift in paradigm from the multicultural to the intercultural perspective is fundamental to have this sense of empathy solidarity and the shared um, perspective and uh, the importance of investing in education and learning and uh, as we said uh, as we heard with the different interventions in education we have uh, education about knowledge our culture the culture of the other education about attitudes that are crucial for intercultural dialogue and inter and education that can be done with different uh, uh, instruments. So we have the traditional way of face-to-face -face that we never have to, to forget, of course. We have also uh, what Professor Pelea was giving as an example, the full immersion into another environment. So with these uh, joint courses and when students have the possibility to spend periods of time elsewhere, and I would say to enlarge also these mobility schemes, not only to students, but to civil society, to different groups in society, because by living in another country, like to have a long-term residency, residencies, we are really exposed to the other person's culture. And to conclude on um, what uh, all the speakers underlined, the importance of the digital tools. I mean, we, are, we have been made aware, again, during the pandemic of, of these tools, some of us were more resistant, but there is a great potential also for inclusion, because many people, they didn't have the privilege, even before the pandemic, to travel, to, to participate for economic reasons, visa restrictions. And so the digital world is allowing more people to, to participate. It is true that there is this digital divide they didn't allow at the same level everybody to, to participate, but we have seen with some of our activities that we have, we have reached some people that never in the past could, could participate in, this, in these exchanges. So um, I thank you because there are really important reflections that emerged from, from, from the debate and on which we are committed to, to build on. And I think that we need to spread as much as we can uh, also this message that is uh, coming out of, of the discussion, because maybe for us it is obvious what we are uh, debating, but we need uh, actually more and more people to take awareness of this interconnection of the need for cooperation and, uh, and solidarity as a matter of survival let's say for uh, for all of us thank you professor benaziz and thank you to all of our speakers thank you 
Thank you. Professor Benazisa, moi, je voudrais juste ajouter quelque chose sur justement like la question. Je voudrais ajouter quelque chose sur la digitalisation, juste pour informer les participants. On le 19 octobre, il y aura un webinar sur le sujet de la digitalisation et de son impact sur la promotion de l'interculturel dialogue avec un autre auteur du rapport de la Annaline Foundation. Il est organisé avec le sub-network on e-learning and communication. So I was listening to our speakers and I thought this. I think that the Tres Culturas Foundation and Donnelline Foundation and for UNIMED, the promotional dialogue is at the core of our daily work, but we still um, have much to do. So not only we have the Euro-Mediterranean agenda, but we should have our own agenda in order to create this kind of dialogue, as Antonio said, as Mr. Antonio said. Also, as a UNIMED, we believe that we should develop Euro-Mediterranean studies in order to encourage universities to develop Euro-Mediterranean studies. So that is all. I just wanted to uh, invite you all to work even more on those issues, as always, as always. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Kaleya. Thank you very much. And it's been thank you to everyone. And uh, I look forward to keeping in contact and to following up on this uh, very dynamic agenda that we've been discussing. It's been a great pleasure. And I look forward, if anybody's able to travel to Malta, but even if you're not, there's always the digital uh, connect waiting. So thank you. Thank you to UNIMED. Thank you, Secretary General. And thank you to Anna Lind Foundation for this wonderful uh, moment, uh, which we look forward to continuing. Merci, merci beaucoup, merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Benassisa.